problems, I got mine. You got a dollar, I got a dime. You got a family, wish I had mine. You got a home, I'm committing a crime. Come I'm on, sleeping everybody. on the spree. My cat is not a movie industry cat. <clears throat> he would not be good at movies. He doesn't go off. Getting him to jump on my lap is even a hassle. Hey, hello there. Um, anyway, Kung Fu Cowboy, Richard Del Conner here. And uh, going to be feeling Kung Fu Cowboyish more and more, but uh, feeling painish more and more. Uh, quick little story on that. Um, I went and filled the pain prescription yesterday for the lidocaine, and then they said I need an authorization for my insurance company. I mean, I'm in pain right now. <clears throat> and an authorization can take seven to 14 days. Now they can put a rush on it and do it in three to five. And, uh, but you know, I, I need this medication now. So I went to the um, <clears throat> receptionist in my radiation place today. And I uh, told her, you know, what, how's it going with the authorization? And she goes, oh, okay, well, we just sent it in. <laughs> they hadn't even sent it in. I don't know if it bounced back to them and then they have to send for the authorization or something. I don't know what happened, but it's a good thing I went to them because I think it was just sitting there. So I lost the whole day, you know, that they didn't even know what they needed to authorize. I, so anyway, um, I asked if she could rush it, but she said she couldn't figure out a way to do it. So anyway, kind of on my own for who knows how long till I get that pain medication. Now, the reason I'm kind of pointing this out is when I talked to the doctor, he made some uh, kind of a, a, a cocky remark. Well, you're not the first one to go through this. You know, a lot of people have suffered just like this. So we know all the things you're going to feel, you know. And I'm thinking today, well, after they couldn't feel, after I realized, you know, this was taken away. Well, if he's done this before, then he must have known that he should get the pre-auth. Or maybe he doesn't. Maybe some insurance companies don't require the pre-auth. But the point being is he still should have anticipated if he knows I was going to be in pain at this point, you know, he said, oh yeah, you're, you should be in pain by now. And then he should have maybe anticipated the prescription for it is what I'm getting at. So um, in this case, you know, you always have to, you know, you have to, they, they only respond to your pain. Your t anyway, uh, I'm just a little disappointed in that. I think he could have anticipated this better, prepared me better for that. Because um, he said it's going to get worse. He said it's going to get a lot worse. In fact, he said if I'm one-third through the program, it's going to probably be three times worse by the time I'm done. Okay, so anyway, um, chemotherapy is still no big deal, fortunately. Um, in, in fact, I don't know, maybe I'll take my antinazimil medicine. I'm just trying to wonder if it's really if I need it, you know, because I don't seem to be uh, responding with the... Uh, I, well, I've got the loss of appetite and everything. That could be the radiation, too. I'm not sure. Anyway, just telling you what's going on so you got an idea. By the time we're done with this, hopefully I'll have a better understanding and I can explain what happened. And if you have to go through this experience, then I, I wish I'd heard this story maybe once. <laughs> a, maybe a long story. I'll keep trying to keep it short. Anyway, um, in terms of my Kung Fu, I did a Kung Fu class yesterday, but it's, a, it's really super hot. In fact, I'm all sweaty just from going to my, my um, appointment. It's a, uh, what is it now? It's not even, it's 9, 9.54 in the morning and it's already 94 degrees out there according to my phone or something like that. So yeah, I, I had the window down in my car. You're still just hot. You got the hair, the air blowing out my, <clears throat> you know, just air intake blowing. I mean, it's hot air. It's like, this is cooking me. So I rolled down the window. That's a little better having that much air going through. But anyway, it's pretty hot up here. And my car doesn't start in hot weather well. <clears throat> I think it's my MAF. As I may have told the story. I told it in one podcast. Anyway, when I got the car from my brother, he told me that it has trouble starting in hot weather. And it does. I mean, it won't start in hot weather. <laughs> Anything over 90 degrees, you're at risk. Uh, the first time when the engine's cold, it'll start. But once you drive it and then it's in hot weather, it can't get to a cool enough level to start. And uh, so anyway, I think it was the MAF switch thing. I pull out this thing in my air intake in my Tacoma and I spray it with this MAF special spray with a special chemical that won't harm it. You spray the sensors with it and pop it back in there. And I think that's it. But man, just from, I was thinking about getting some gas on the way back today. And uh, the, uh, I was hard starting my car. Even from this morning, I drove it this morning to the doctor's office down Palmdale. I'll have to figure out how many miles that is. And uh, went by appointment, came back ha half an hour later or something, and it had trouble starting. So it's like, I'm not going to get back gas. I'll get it in the morning tomorrow. So yeah, I got to get gas in the morning. I don't have enough for next week's trips. But anyway, <clears throat> um, oh yeah, so this heat and the power went out yesterday during my, my Zoom class. And so the Zoom cut off <laughs> and my internet went out. So I had to call the guy on the phone and then we did it, you know, orally. I guided him orally. That sounds not right. 
But I, uh, I, I just did it over the phone, the telephone. And uh, I said, inhale, exhale, right forward, inhale, exhale, left forward. And then <clears throat> once I synced him up, I know that he was synced up with me. I just say, inhale, exhale, and we do the whole Tai Chi form together. And uh, I always ask him, did, did you sync up? And he says, yeah. And so he's got it down. Well, he's been doing it for a while. <laughs> but uh, it's, I can't tell. <clears throat> Unless he tells me, I don't know for sure that he's synced up because I can't see him. But when the, in that situation, like, even, when I'm, even when I've got the Zoom, it's so far away and it's so small. And without my glasses on, I actually can't tell what he's doing anyway. So I need a big, huge monitor for me to be able to really see clearly. So anyway, um, but yeah, we did the Tai Chi class. I had to cut it short because of the uh, power outage. And... Uh, uh, YouTube's been messing with these videos. Um, I'm just now up, you know, got 16 of them up and I'm putting in the descriptions and the keywords and stuff and trying to get a routine going. And the very first one they put down for 18 and older, they put a restriction on it. And then they made it so you couldn't share it or embed it in other websites or something. It's like, wow. Okay. They're, they're just really just like, I guess, censored it. And then they, <clears throat> then I started editing the other ones. And while I was editing the other ones, they must have known that I was there <laughs> because they changed it. And then I went back a little while later and, oh, it's not 18 plus. It was for like a couple hours or, you know, has been for how many days. But once I started working on the other ones, somebody at YouTube was obviously checking out what I was doing and watching me working and decided, oh, well, maybe it doesn't need this 18 plus. But they still got the restrictions where you can't share my videos and stuff. So they're, they're really, I guess, putting a cap on me or limiting me. I think because it's medical information. I think that's the big thing over the last four years because of all the false medical information. YouTube doesn't want to put any false medical information. So they're flagging me because I'm giving medical information. I think. Just guessing wildly. So anyway, um, <clears throat> I'm, I've all caught up and I just got to put all the descriptions in on all the videos, get a routine. I got a little template and then I can just update a few things and then boom, I can slap it in there and I'm getting better at the editing. I don't know how long it's going to take me to actually shoot and edit. I'm going to get it down. In fact, maybe I'll kind of time it with this one. I'll shoot this one and I'll go in there. I wish I had Premiere open because it takes like five minutes to open the programs. And uh, But anyway, I'll go in there and I'll... Well, I have to upload it. And so after I upload it, I'll be I'll try to fire up the programs and I'll, I'll do the work and I'll edit it. And then I'll upload it to YouTube and then I'll edit the description and the keywords and stuff. And wham, I'll know how long it takes to make one of these videos. So I'll maybe tell you tomorrow. Um, yeah, so Kung Fu Cowboy, I'm, I'm just itching and itching. I've been listening to the songs and, and getting ideas. In fact, I was playing bongos this morning. Um, I, I'm, I'm gonna put, I love playing bongos. and. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to putting some bongos on the record. And uh, that's going to be one of the last overdubs on this record to finish it. And if I don't get time to put much on this record, because this record is kind of done. I'm in a kind of a, I don't want to say hurry, but I really want to get to my next album and start it from scratch in Logic. Because this one's a mixture of, uh, I started this one when I was living in my car. So the track, some of it's recorded in a couple different places. So I want to start a whole fresh album, you know, just... So I'm really looking forward to that. This next album. And the next album right now is tentatively called Second Resurrection. <laughs> First album, Scorpion Resurrection. And then Second Re Resurrection. I, I don't know. What, what do we call the, the third one? Sacred Resurrection? <laughs> Any, oh, yeah. This time I was prepared better. Real quickly. Here we go. This is from the Tao of Taoism by me, Richard Del Conner, also known as Buddha Jin. Uh, here, picture on the back. Yeah, there's here me with my kids doing uh, Tai Chi in my backyard in Tahunga. I used to, that was called the House of Jin. I used to teach private lessons there. And uh, one of my students came over and shot some videos of me with the kids there one day. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, so anyway, let's see, where were we? Number nine. <clears throat> Going to extremes is careless and unbalanced. Ah, oh, all you adrenaline junkies out there. It's going to be a hard one to swallow. Going to extremes is careless. Remember that word careless? You have less care than you should. Maybe less care about your well-being. And unbalanced. The desire to be motivated so far to do something dangerous means that you're really just, there's something wrong. There's something that's pushing you. There's something unbalanced that's causing you to go that direction. To display an outward lack of awareness reflects a deeper I call it unbalanced. Imbalance is probably it. But it's interesting because maybe, maybe I should stay at unbalanced because of what we're talking about. We're talking about a life balance. So rather than an imbalance, which is something you can maybe weigh on a scale, this is a figurative balance. So unbalanced. Uh, that's what I said. Anyway, that's what my book says, unbalanced. So we'll go with that.
So anyway, anyway, if you actually pretend to be stupid, then that's even worse yet. So in other words, you're trying to do something dangerous where you might die for a thrill, or you're trying to look dumber than you are. You know, these are different kinds of imbalances. Um, know when to change direction. Yeah, that's an important one. And in fact, I would say that's probably the biggest failure in my life. I've always been pretty good at changing directions, maybe a little too soon sometimes. But in the case of my family, I stuck around for an extra 15 years and raised my kids. I should have changed directions. I really thought my kids were going to appreciate it. <laughs> they don't even call me a Father's Day. So I lost 15 years of my life thinking that I was doing the right thing. So I should have changed direction. So I'm, I'm putting the blame on me. That's one of the reasons I'm not a big success. Um, know when to start a new goal. I've always got 10 goals going. My problem is knowing which one to work on and which ones to do and which are the priority each year. And I can never get enough of them done. I'm a one-man operation. I write, edit, publish, do the graphics, do the distribution, do the marketing, do the promo, do the advertising. Everything's just me. So it's... <laughs> If I was a big success, I'd take big credit. But to be honest with you, you can't be a one-man. Well, anyway, I, I just said you can't be a one-man. I'm a one-man operation. I'm surviving. I haven't gone bankrupt. I, I, lots of people, my relatives and everybody, they've all gone bankrupt. I may be poor, but I haven't gone bankrupt. <laughs> close, very close. Uh, within $100 of being... Whoop, bump up my camera, sorry. Uh, well, I've been within $100 of being bankrupt uh, for years at a time. Just my float and my balance within $100 every month. Man, I was just, just working and getting enough. And boom, pay a bill. Working enough. Pay a bill. Boom. Sheesh. That was desperate times for about half a dozen years. Well, 10 years, really. Okay, anyway. <clears throat> mumbling. I was noticing that when I was editing these videos, sometimes I talk softer and the microphone's not picking up. And I didn't move my, my blockade over here. I'm sorry. So the edit, it might be kind of echoey. Oh, man. Uh, maybe I'll use that. Anyway, what I really should have is a shotgun mic that just points right at me. And that would give you, a, I, guess, I, I ordered one, but I didn't like it. It actually, I didn't like it. But okay. Um, in terms of the volume, hello, hello. I think that was too loud. Uh, making sure I'm loud enough. One, the last one I cut, I thought it was really low in volume. Here we go. <clears throat> maybe, okay. Last, let's finish this. Know when a direction is completed. See? You got to know when you're done and not hang around too long. <laughs> the ability to say goodbye. I wanted to write a book about that back in the 80s. I realized the ability to say goodbye, how to leave a party, how to get out of a conversation, how to get out of meeting somebody on the sidewalk. What are the ways you can politely get out of the conversation without hurting people's feelings? And there's, a, there's an art to that. And uh, I'm not going to claim to have mastered that one. Okay, so let me read the whole thing again. I'll, I'll get out of here. Okay. Well, actually, we'll see how long this thing takes. Remember, I said it was like 9.50 when I, 54 when I started this video. So, it's, here we go. Okay. Going to extremes is careless and unbalanced. To display an outward lack of awareness reflects a deeper inner unbalance. Know when to change direction. Know when to start a new goal. Know when a direction is completed. All right, well, this is completed. <laughs> Let me get out of here. All right, Kung Fu Cowboy here. And uh, uh, I'm not sure what day this is, but I'm giving you every week I'm at putting a different song. But these are just the roughest, roughest tracks. There's no echo. There's no reverb. There's no moving the faders. I haven't decided. There's no, I, I haven't even put EQ on the instruments or anything. Everything's just like I recorded it. I kind of put everything where I wanted it. And then I just stick back and hit play button. And that's what you're hearing. Those are the mixes you're getting. You're getting the roughest, rough mixes there can possibly be. In other words, what's the worst that can sound if I don't do anything at all? Now I'm going to go in there and tighten it up and make instruments come back and go back a little farther and put some reverb and who knows, but make it all sound a lot better. So I'm excited. So, um, yeah, anyway, hope you're enjoying your songs. Um, uh, I hope you are. <laughs> Get the record when it comes out. Come on, prove my parents wrong. My parents say I'll never be a success. Come on, help me. Help me prove them wrong. And that's not only to be disrespectful, you should always try to support your parents, but my parents don't support me. So we've kind of got an altered reality here in which my parents don't want me to succeed. So don't feel bad about trying to prove my parents are wrong. <laughs>
problems, I got mine. You got a dollar, I got a dime. You got a family, wish I had mine. You got a home, I'm committing a crime. I'm sleeping on the street, in my car in the cold and heat. Part-time job's all I find, searching for my peace of mind. Sleeping with the stars. We're not homeless, we have cars I need a financial injection To complete my scorpion resurrection My Buddha Kung Fu with Shaolin Chi Masters Along with Tai Chi Youth, a playground in Atlantis The Coyote Clan was a wife and two kids But now they're religion, singing with me for beds No, I'm not blaming the economy I'm done shaming those who deserted me I got resentment for some relatives who failed to help Or offer a place to live Sleeping with the stars We're not homeless, we have cars I need a financial injection To complete my scorpion resurrection I see the blessing of what could have been much worse If I'd let them support me, their advice would be my curse Parents want peace of mind when they go to bed each night So for their security, they know what's right <laughs> only see how much I was paid. I haven't lived my life for money. I've been singing songs and writing poetry. I'm a man of multiple identities. I don't think you ever see all of me. I am who I want to be. Can you say the same? Are you really free? Sleeping with the stars. We're not homeless. We have cars. I need a financial connection To complete my scorpion resurrection <laughs>